And the First Lady of the United States, accompanied by Mary J. Blige, Dr. Karen Knudsen, and Tamika Felder. Thank you so much. This, my name is Tamika Felder. I'm so honored to be here with you all today for this momentous launch to recognize the collaborative effort to make progress in both breast and cervical cancers. <sighs> Thank you to the First Lady, the Cancer Moonshot, the American Cancer Society, and so many more. As someone who has been touched by cancer in so many ways, I am beyond touched by the commitment to health equity and the inclusion of survivors and advocates as members as well as in the National Roundtable on Cervical Cancer Leadership. I am so grateful. Patient voices are invaluable and is the sharing of our stories that continue to influence change and make an impact. Cancer has been a constant in my life from early on. My father died of colon cancer the day before my 17th birthday. He was my very best friend. Never did I imagine that I would endure my own diagnosis of cancer less than a decade later. I was diagnosed with cervical cancer in 2001 at the age of 25. I endured a radical hysterectomy followed by chemotherapy and radiation therapy. They were tough, but I'm so thankful that I didn't succumb to cervical cancer. But I did lose my fertility. And my life, because of that, has been forever changed by that experience. Having cancer is hard. Surgery is hard. Chemotherapy, radiation is hard and the constant fear of death. I survived it, but not without the residual effects that are life-lasting. There are no easy cancers, and they all matter. When I was diagnosed, I felt alone. There were no other cervical cancer patients and survivors sharing their stories, and accessible information was scarce. I did something about that. I created what I wish I had, an organization called Survivor by survivors, run by cervical cancer survivors. And it is our mission to empower, motivate, and train patient advocates to use their stories to do what we're all here to do today, make progress in cervical cancer and the breast cancer space. Simply, we all collectively are working to ensure that no woman feels alone. That is a goal shared by these roundtable launches, the Cancer Moonshot, and the First Lady. As I stand here with you all, I can't help but think about all people diagnosed with cancer. But I especially want to share the names of Jeanette Acosta, Erica Fraser Stum, Nanette Quintanilla, Tialita Rickenbacker, Holly Lawson, Becky Wallace, who died a year ago this month, Jillian Scalfani, Curtissa Clay, and so many women who have died of cervical cancer and used their voice for change up until the last breath. I miss them all. No one should die of cervical cancer. We have multiple tools, practices, and support to make sure that this does not happen. But sadly, people are still dying. For me, it is personal. My legacy will not be the lives that I bring into this world but it will be the lives that I save. I am committed to making my survivorship count. I'm joining this effort. Together in collaboration, we can end cervical cancer and accelerate progress against breast cancer. I wanna thank you for your time, but mostly I wanna thank you for your commitment. That's why we're all here together. 
I now have the honor of welcoming recording artist and preventive cancer screening advocate, Ms. Mary J. Blige. Thank you.